Welcome everyone, this is Jonathan Gersharter and I'm here to give a lightning talk on the value of running containers on bare metal servers. So just to set context, uh, a bare metal server it just simply has the Linux operating system installed, whereas a virtualization platform has the hypervisor layer, which shares CPU and RAM between the guests and the uh, applications. So this talk is really summarized in this slide. On the right, you see a container environment without the hypervisor and virtualization layer. On the left, you see with the either KVM or ESXi hypervisor, the difference being not only the hypervisor layer, but also the people, the virtualization team that is running the virtualization software, which is an extra complexity in terms of team uh, people, uh, do they have the right skill set, uh, etc. So we'll go into those details next. So since you have different operations teams, uh, if you're operating in a virtualization environment, uh, who would be the ones taking the call? Who would be uh, answering support? Uh, is the problem in virtualization? Is the problem somewhere else? So it's an extra uh, complexity for troubleshooting. Uh, bare metal uh, offers increased performance. So there's a, you don't have that virtualization overhead. Therefore, you can get uh, increased speed. You can access Linux real time features, et cetera, and um, before, uh, increase, uh, better performance. The density surely uh, increases because you have more containers on a bare metal server since you don't have that hypervisor layer uh, extra overhead. Sometimes um, to reduce the noisy neighbor problem, uh, one might run one container per VM um, and therefore that density advantage is further reduced because uh, your number of containers is limited to how many VMs you can operate. Uh, the cost is improved with uh, bare metal when you are removing that hypervisor virtualization layer as well. And again, the higher uh, density also increases the ROI of bare metal. Uh, security is better since you don't have that uh, you have a reduced uh, attack surface and virtualization vulnerabilities can be removed. If applications have specific hardware needs, such as uh, GPUs or FPGAs, uh, those can be accessed more easily uh, when the operating system is accessing them directly without that virtualization layer. Again, the troubleshooting should be easier without the virtualization layer to uh, have to troubleshoot as well. So let's look at some recommendations. Uh, it is in a it kind of in a hybrid mode where you run master Kubernetes nodes on the virtualization platform, and then as we see next, uh, run the worker or application nodes directly on the bare metal for high IO, IO and again special use cases such as SIRV, uh, GPUs, and FPGAs. Uh, some rec uh, recommended to size hosts in advance. Uh, especially when you're considering pod density and provisioning of bare metal hosts may take longer. Uh, it's important to secure the operating system, so one should not should run non-critical services uh, to patch it, run vulnerability scans. This is standard security practice. Uh, be careful to use container-based images that are trusted and vet it. So when it pulls any container-based image from the wild, you don't know, does it maybe have a virus? Is root access enabled? Uh, what packages are running on it? If you use a trusted container registry, then those images are pre-vetted and pre-secured. In closing, with uh, containers on bare metal, you have a lower TCO and an increased uh, utilization density and performance. Thank you. Let's take Q&A.
Thank you. If there are any questions, we can take them written or live. So uh, I'll answer them both written and live. So um, Akash asks, are there any evolving standards for bare metal provisioning? So yes, there is an open source tool um, that does bare metal provisioning. It's called um, Iron, and I can provide a link to that in the chat. And um, Timothy Lin asks, aside from use cases involving large GPU FPGA, are there benefits having a hypervisor in there? So the hypervisor benefit is perhaps for the master or the controlling nodes, but certainly for the worker nodes, you want those on bare metal. So let me type in those two answers. In the Q&A, uh, Daya asks, can you please comment on orchestration aspects for bare metal hosts? Uh, I'm not sure what orchestration uh, aspect is, but yes, the orchestration is uh, conducted by um, Ansible or other similar tools to um, orchestrate the bare metal. Uh, Andrew. Will you decrease the number of node port servers if running on bare metal versus VM? Yes. Um, uh, Chirag asks, I think we can also pass SRIV GPU directly to VM over the virtualization layer. Yes, that's true. Sayad Sheikh asks, in terms of hardware, how much cores RAM can we save adopting container versus virtual machine? So it would depend um, to an extent on, obviously, on the hardware, the use case. Um, it's hard to give a, a raw number without knowing um, the, use, you know, the hardware you have, the use cases of the applications. Um, but I've seen around a three to one uh, ratio, but it's very dependent on what the original size of the VM was, um, et cetera.
Uh, Timothy Lynn asks, are there reference architectures available for review? Um, yes, there are. Um, I don't have them immediately available, but I will have a look and uh, try and send to you. Daya asks, um, let me scroll up. Uh, traffic isolation becomes a bigger concern in bare metal. Is the community thinking of how to address this? Um, one, I would also ask it any more, um, you provide a bit more detail on traffic isolation. Um, are you thinking of network slicing? Is it um, network prioritization? How, how, is that, how is that, maybe just add to the chat, how is that done in virtualization that you want it done in bare metal? Um, Side is asking in Q&A, uh, why container is more secure while it should be vice versa? Vice versa compared to VM, I'm not sure what your exact question is. There is a Slack channel where we can continue um, this conversation because I think the session is wrapping up. So let me put that in the Q&A. The session is wrapping up now. Let's continue in the Slack channel, please. Thank you for your participation and questions.